Yes. City Breaker plus Pilfer Goods is awesome. This City Breaker has been really nice. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Twisted Swain. It's back. We're going to be trying out some new cards and some cards that got buffed here with our Twisted Fate Swain deck. Not a very traditional Twisted Fate Swain list because of that, but let's see what we got. We have this new card, Line em Up. Two mana burst speed, summon a powder keg, and create a knock em down in hand. So we can get a powder keg when our opponent is not expecting it at burst speed. And we also get this knock em down, which uh, costs one mana and is fleeting and can do one damage to anything. It's a blade's edge, but fleeting, right? So we get a, a fleeting blade's edge that I guess is also slow speed. Um, but that can, the reason uh, why to play line them up is because it just pairs really well with like make it rain. You know, having make it rain, which is now two mana, this card got buffed, have it deal uh, two damage three times among different targets. Um, it also pairs great with, with a Twisted Fate red card, right? Because like with Twisted Fate red card, you want to have a lot of powder kegs in play red card mow down a whole bunch of stuff so we got that that's really what it's for is like those two cards in particular um black market merchants now a 2-2 and that's going to be pretty awesome so that whenever we are nabbing enemy cards that it will stay alive from like a fortune croaker so now fortune croaker and black market merchant work well together fortune croaker can also you know uh you know dreadway deckhands a 2-2 house spider 2-2 so you know like we can do that with all those to draw some extra cards we also have City Breaker, which, you know, you can Fortune Croaker a City Breaker, but City Breaker looks pretty sweet as a 1-5. It can do a little bit better blocking, can actually deal some damage. And since, like, the City Breaker is dealing one damage or something, whenever it blocks it, that can enable, like, a Ravenous Flock um, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try City Breaker in here. And the reason why we want City Breaker is because this is basically mini Leviathan, right? Deal one to the enemy Nexus, round start. Leviathan does three to the enemy Nexus, round start. But each one of those adds up towards leveling up your Swain. And we are when you're doing all the other stuff, like a, a big red card with Powder Kegs, Make It Rain, Monster Harpoon, all that kind of stuff, you level up your Swain, and then your City Breaker is going to be stunning the uh, strongest back row enemy at, at the round start. We're also going to have two Riptide Rex to go with two Leviathans. Normally, this kind of deck, you just play like three Leviathan at the top end and then have other removal um, but the person that donated, and these are all viewer submitted donation decks today, by the way. Um, the person who donated said they, they liked Riptide Rex and they thought Riptide Rex felt pretty good. And, and I, I'm willing to give it a try. Basically, the thinking here is that, of course, it should be enabled fairly easily with the City Breaker. But then second, if you're using like Make It Rains and Twisted Fate Red Card and, you know, your Ravenous Flock and you're, you're keeping the board pretty clear and they only have one or two targets and not, you know, like a full board then Riptide Rex can really do a good job of cleaning up those two targets, basically dealing 12 damage um, randomly between those couple of targets. So I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm, I'm, Yeah, like let's go ahead and give it a try. It's always good to try different things. So let's see. So this is a little bit of a different Twisted Swain list. There's no, uh, none of like the mid-tier Noxus removal, which there's a lot of good ones. Uh, but we're not playing, you know, your Culling Strike, your Death Hand, um, Noxion Fervor, that kind of stuff. No. Um, scorched Earth, Noxion, Guillotine. This will be interesting to see uh, how it does. So let's get to it. Let's get to the games. We're going to go play five games in ranked with Twisted Swain. Looks like we get a mirror match immediately. We also, you know, we're playing more Nab for our card draw, which Nab in this matchup seems pretty good. I think we, yeah, let's mulligan Swain. I guess I'm mulligan these two. I'm not sure about those two. Hey, Dr. Fizz, love you too. Okay, prediction has started. For those of y'all here in chat. Alright, House Spider doing its thing. 
We can save up spell mana here now. I could play Fortune Croaker, but I think Mega Rain's a pretty good possibility. Yeah. Like they're just going to be playing Mega Rain right now. Run while you can. Okay. I'll take that. We trade two drops, except for we still get the 1-1 one, one spider still. still good. I, talk to These are my I wish the powder keg affected that. <laughs> and just blew the powder keg and dealt two to both of them. Alright, we got the first point of damage for Swain. Oh man, that enabling monster harpoon is so good. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. And there's that mega rain they're holding on to. Swain. Looks like trouble. Could play leveled up Swain, but I think I'm just gonna black market merchant pill for goods. Alright. Wow, they're playing pill for goods also. City Breaker plus Pilfer Goods is awesome. This City Breaker has been really nice. Keep up, keep up. You using it. Yeah, that's true. Like a fish in water. <laughs> Line them up. Yeah, I think that Riptide Rex pull is pretty good, right? That's, that's not bad. We also have two, like, you know, Arachnoid Sentry is, I don't know, it's all right. But I think it would probably be better if it, like, you know, just cost two mana and Ravenous Flock cost zero, right? Like, that would probably be a more fair combo. Um, but then again, I can just simply, I think I'm just going to line them up and knock them down. Just gonna line them up, knock them down, deal two to this thing, and then I'll just do zero to the you know zero mana, flock this fortune croaker. Just get rid of both blockers. <laughs> there we go, GGs. Okay, city breaker was incredible. That's awesome. Love it. <laughs> Good old Legends of Runeterra pairing. You always get paired against the same regions. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I I mean, I guess I could see keeping all of it, to be honest. I, I'm missing, like, the one mana Ravenous lock, Flock, but besides that, like, you know, they're going to be aggressive. I'm going to want to curve out, and I, I guess this is just fine. No, so this isn't a rematch. No, we're not playing mirror match anymore. We're playing, yeah, aggro deck now. This time. I feel like we could do worse than this. I don't know. I don't change fate, but I can see it. This matchup isn't as much about the card advantage. No 
no prey, no pay. Misfortune makes everything better. No, I guess I should just be selling the saboteur. Yeah, I should just be selling the saboteur. The aim. Captain's orders. You pay first. Love ya. Yeah, I should have stunned the saboteur. That extra point of damage could really matter. I wish we had drawn Ravenous Flanco. Really, Ravenous Flock? Now you show up. But not gonna not gonna be bad, you Ravenous Flocks. You'll help us take down Full Fortune. So Swain's at eight. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Wow. Well, the good news is I have two more cards than they do. You know, like we're even up on the board. Yes, I do think Runeterra is very balanced right now. Absolutely. Good card, opponent. Yeah, double up's a good card. That's a good card. Well, I really hope they don't have another decimate. Looks like... Yeah, like, they could just do 60% of my life total in three cards with decimate, double up, decimate. No, they can't. Alright, good. So, yeah, that almost cost... I, I really almost got punished by not stunning the Legion Saboteur. Because I took... Remember, I took one extra damage than what I needed to. I would have stunned the saboteur over the spider. Could have been at five. That was scary. <laughs> I guess you, you can only play against your same region, I guess. Whatever region you got. I need to just, like, keep, like, a list. See, like, what the percentage is. Because we, we play 20 games a day. You know, like, in these games, we're playing 25 games a day. Really need to keep a list of like how many times like one of your two two regions you play. Against. So you know like we're playing Bilgewater or Noxus. How many how many games we play against like just Bilgewater or Noxus? You know like either one, not the exact same. So it feels like it's a a very high percentage of times you get paired against like one of your regions, whatever regions you're playing. Anyway, um, House Spider, Dreadway Deckhand, Mega Rain, Twisted Fate. This is a very good hand, I think. So plan is round two House Spider, round three Deckhand plus Mega Rain. Round four, Twisted Fate. I'll shoot the wings off a Bilgewater. I'll do better this time. Okay, ready. AB Carter says, do you think it could feel like that because of the birthday paradox-like effect? And I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm going to say absolutely. No 
So I think I kind of feel like okay. I know, like I played the Mega Rain, but then I was thinking after. So I haven't said anything since then. But I was thinking afterwards, and I was thinking I shouldn't have played the Mega Rain because I could have just saved the two spell mana and try to try to set up the red card. I was I was kind of focused on that thing doing the two damage, but I should have tried to set up the red card dealing the two damage. So we're at six out of twelve right now. So this would be seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, sorry, sorry, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This would be eleven. But there we go. They play one more thing. And now this is 12. Something for all. And so now Swain's leveled up next round. Let's get to it. Ready? Aim? Just run while you can. Charmed, I'm sure. So this puts me down to 13, puts me down to 12 if I don't block. Just block here, go to 12. Or go to 13. Yeah, let's do that. Love ya. Right, Chichi says, if we suppose equal distributions of regions and a negligible amount of single region decks, how often should you hit one same region as you're playing? That's a good question. I do not know the answer to that. So that's the thing. I don't. I don't know. Like what the, the true, representation of like, what you, percentage you should be against same region, would be. I could get like make it rain from them. They attack with Gangplank, I block with Twisted Fate, I go, I take six. I'll show him pain. I go down to seven. Easy. I was worried about um, Fervor, of course. Dang, that's a lot of burn. I feel pretty good about this. So, like, whenever they attack with Grenadier, Deer, I'm going to be fervoring whatever blocks so that they don't get to deal the one damage to me. Do I just play Leviathan? I don't really want to play Leviathan. Yeah, we got him. All right, GG's. Yep. We're just gonna, so basically, I was going to red card to put him down to three and then fervor to kill him. Oh, all right. We got Lissandra Talia. No Scorched Earths in our deck. This could be problematic. Scorched Earth is the card that we kind of need for this matchup. You can see our deck is definitely tuned for the smaller decks, not really the 8-8 Overwhelms. This is the first time that I've played against Lissandra Talia since the patch update, and I've been very happy not playing against this deck because, as you all know, this is like the new deck that I can never defeat. So I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah, Rose says, I run Scorch Earth for this, I'm scared. And I am also scared. I don't know exactly uh, what to do. I guess I'm playing these? I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing with this entry right now. 
But Sentry's probably like a good card to have access to, even if we don't play it on round three. Probably gonna want it against like some 8-8s and stuff. I can go line him up gold card to try to kill Lissandra. I can just get another City Breaker in play. Try to start doing two damage rounds. Don't love my chances. I guess this is the reason why you gotta play Scorched Earth is this matchup. Yeah, this is not great. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's my best plan is like Thrall, Inquis you know, future the Thrall and Inquisitor and you know, maybe try to do what they're doing. I guess that's my best plan. They could definitely be scared like if I'm them, I'm scared of Scorched Earth, right? And so like that's like, so they have to kind of be worried about Promising Future, like, they Promising Future, the Frozen Thrall, and then I Scorched Earth it. Right, especially how I didn't spend that 3 mana. I'm kind of, like, representing that I got Scorched Earth. I definitely can't deal with Tough Nexus, right? Like, Lissandra's just a nightmare also because of Tough Nexus. There's just so many things about this matchup that are just bad for us. It's, you know, like, we're not playing Scorch Earth, so, like, maybe that's, that's like, what we're doing is just kind of punting this matchup. Which is completely fair to do. You can't... It's hard to beat everything. And so, like, I think our deck's not really designed to beat this one. You need you need your scorched earth, your pulling strikes, that kind of stuff. But it's all all good. Can't beat everything.
Yeah, so the opponent made some space for us. That's good. I hope they can't kill this in this Draclorn Inquisitor. Harpoon won't be enabled. Leviathan doesn't do anything with Tough Nexus. Tough Nexus just destroys us. It's like Leviathan's our best card, but it doesn't do anything. This is... I mean, I guess... I guess I gotta take Harpoon and just try to 6 damage, kill, 6 mana kill this Lissandra. I mean, you think I should, should take Leviathan? Like, Leviathan doesn't do anything. That's true, the Harpoon with the Overwhelm. Maybe we get some damage in that way. I was definitely hoping that we were going to be able to ice fill Archer first. Submit to the cold. Stinging cold. I know I could have done that in response to the Ice Shard and they would have taken one damage, but I wanted that to take my priority. Oh, come on. Hoping that they wouldn't... Like, maybe... Yeah, hoping that maybe, like, the Swain would catch him off guard. Whoa. That's good for me, because that means they have no more Thralls in hand. Yeah, that clock hand buff is really nice. I think being a 7-7. Seven, seven. We have the Nexus, we're smart. I don't know if Flock's gonna get it done. I don't know if Flock's enough. It's probably not. I think like here is where we like need Leviathan. Like we could take Croker, but not really a reason to. I can Ice Full Archer, the Grumpy Rock Bear attack, force them to have their Inquisitor block my Swain. Yeah, I guess I do that. Then it, the problem here is, you know, Swain dies then to Avalanche and Fly to Ravine and stuff like that. But if we find Leviathan, the card that we need, Leviathan will bring along another Swain anyway. And this would just get rid of this Inquisitor that's always scary. Leave your bags in the door. All right, never mind. I would have full attacked, yes. If they didn't play this 3-3 right here, I was going to full attack. I'm pretty glad... Like that, yeah. I'm pretty glad they didn't just... Like, them playing this Tavern Keeper is honestly really hurting them, because if they don't play the Tavern Keeper, I open attack, like, the board's less clear, and now they would have just had two 8-8s, and now they don't have room for the two 8-8s. But I guess they're just going anyway, and they're just getting one 8-8. Yeah, because then they can get the Watcher. 
All right. Uh, I guess we get three non-champion cards, so I guess a non-champion card could be a Leviathan. I guess. Leviathan's the only card that helps out at all. We've gotten very, very lucky this game to even make it this close. <laughs> not gonna lie. Alright, not Leviathan. They had a very slow start and we hit a bunch of good nabs. Alright, so that I think that matchup's unwinnable for the list that we have. I think that all right, Lurkers. How do we do against Lurkers? Yeah, we have to have Scorched Earth for that matchup. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so we have... We're not going to win that matchup ever if we don't have Scorched Earth. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to play Scorched Earth. Sometimes you have to just accept a loss, right? You have to just try to dodge a little better. You know, try to not get paired against it for just like the good sake of everything else. Now, that being said, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be playing Scorched Earth. I'm just saying that that's, that is a fair strategy. So it depends. If that deck is going to be very popular, then we have to change our deck accordingly. If that deck is not going to be very popular, then we'll be good. You can only lurk once around. Don't they want to... I don't know. Like, don't they want to play the that card, like, on my attack round? Because they can't lurk again. Alright, so my plan here was to play Dreadway Deckhand after they attack, and then Twisted Fate clean the board up, which I guess I could still do that. Yeah, I guess that's that's still the better play to do. Yeah, I think Snapdraw Swarm is supposed to be played on when you don't have the attack. Yeah, because you don't get to lurk again, so they just put something on top, like... You don't get to lurk again. You can only lurk once... I guess they haven't heard that new hit single by Billy Ray Cyrus. You can only live once. Um. Alright, come on, let's hit Lurk. What? We missed? We missed our Lurk. I know, how unlucky, right? Never lucky. We missed we missed Lurk. Alright, four and one. It was in the cards. It was in the cards. I liked it. Alright, so there we go. Four and one for Twisted Swain. Looked great. Felt great against everything except for the 
thralls and this we're just not going to beat the thralls and that's okay with this list you know like you can have a much better list play a bunch of scorched earths play a bunch of culling strikes to try to kill lissandra you know and stuff like that noxion guillotine also very good you know you can you have the tools for that matchup but you kind of have to pick and choose right because if you play a bunch of scorched earths you're not going to be as good against like the the pirate aggro that we faced a couple of times and things like that right like you're going to make your deck worse in those other matchups so you got to pick and choose and that's the kind of thing about like this kind of reactive deck once the metagame kind of settles more what are you playing against more you know you can you can tune your deck accordingly i was very very impressed with black market merchant um with two being a two two that felt great you know i i uh, didn't think that that was big, a very big change, changing it from a 2-1 to a 2-2, but honestly, it was a pretty big change. Like, it was a, a better blocker. We got to Fortune Croaker with it. That was a big deal. Um, I liked it being a 2-2. Uh, line him up was all right. You know, getting the powder keg, it wasn't spectacular, but it was all right. That's I'm glad it was a 2-of and not a 3-of. I think it worked fairly well as a 2-of. So it was, it was all right. City Breaker was awesome, especially that first game. That first game was really, like, where we had City Breaker. But, um, you know, just round start, deal one to the enemy nexus, putting a clock on them. Um, I liked City Breaker a whole lot, and it got to do some good blocking and stuff as a 1-5. Really made it more difficult for them to attack in because they don't want their things being damaged anyway for cards like Flock. So I liked City Breaker quite a bit. Because City Breaker made cards like Monster Harpoon, Pilfered Goods, Black Market Merchant much better. And I forgot we were only playing the two Pilfered Goods because we had both Pilfered Goods a lot of the times. And Pilfer Goods was pretty awesome, especially with the City Breaker and the Black Market Merchant. Uh, so yeah, there we go. So that was that was it. We never we never Riptide Rex anybody. We did need to Leviathan a couple of times, or I guess really just that one game. But we didn't seem to need the top end that much. So uh, you know we're you know with uh, nabbing cards and everything like that, maybe you just don't really even need Riptide Rex potentially, and you know you can just have even like two Leviathans at the top end. Usually you play like three Leviathan in this deck. But I could see that even being just a two of because you you know you just want like all this early stuff and doing everything like that and then you just nab their cards. But there we go, that was cool. That was Twisted Swain. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Y'all know the drill. Always love seeing those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. What other decks you want to see on stream? Anything like that. Let me know how your day's going. But that's gonna be it here for Twisted Swain. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.